again and I want to welcome you to our 45th film in our little series pattern of the month and um, <clears throat> today I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna brag again about me meeting all these fancy people or people that's been important to the development on of salmon fishing and actually back in the early 80s I worked as a gilly on Lairdal in Norway uh, at Mr. Brooks, Mr. Ray Brooks's lodge and uh, Mr. Brooks was the man behind the Sunray Shadow which is probably one of the patterns that's really changed uh, the way of looking into how a salmon fly should look like and actually first day I was there before I was working Ray said to me you can go up here and you walk over to that stone and you put your back against the stone and you fish down and on about 25 yards line there's a good lie and I did of course I was a young boy in my 20s I did exactly what Ray told me and I hooked and landed a nice fish my first lardal salmon and Ray asked me, so what fly? And uh, I fished, on, I, I caught it on like a greenish fly for the greenish water in Lairdal and Ray got really upset. And he looked at me and he said, here we fish some Ray shadows. Uh, <clears throat> it's a nice guy. And uh, I learned a lot from Ray and other people in Lairdal. Uh, but those of you watching me tying knows that I, I like to go my own way. Uh, but today I'm going to actually tie a fly. I call it uh, the Sunray Samurai. It's a uh, Samurai design that's been on the... Well, I did this, is it more than 10 years? 15 years ago now. Maybe it's caught thousands of fish. Uh, today I'm going to do it um, influenced by the sunrise shadow, uh, quite natural in the colors with the black and white. And uh, the whole samurai design is influenced by the long winged uh, sunray shadows and the collidols and these slimmer profile flies. Okay, so let's start tying. Yeah, so uh, actually we have put a whole new series of flies uh, onto our web and they are, some of them are samurais tied on TTTs and the reason for that is that uh, people being <laughs> watching us catching fish on TTT samurais and we haven't had any of those in our assortment. So I'm going to start by <coughs> uh, picking a medium TTT and I'm going to use uh, the uh, extra small uh, clear tubing and what I do, do we have a lighter? Ah, here we got a lighter. I start by just melting this to get a little edge here. Just careful. <coughs> Put it on to the TTT, just pull it through and the edge will help this to stop inside the TTT like that. Put it on, make sure I slide it down to where my Fitz needle changes diameter so it really stays. I'm going to use the 12-0 SSS thread, uh, a black one. And we start by putting on some thread. Yeah. <clears throat> and then it's a quite simple fly where I use uh, the black and white to get as much contrast as possible. And I'm going to start with a piece of white hair. And uh, as those of you following this knows, is that we... I have the different designs giving the fly different profiles and uh, summarize, pulling away the long ones here, uh, 
the Samurais are the flies with the slimmest profile. So I have quite a few strands of straight hair and I use a special kind of goat hair. And I put it on and um, normally I press it down with my thumbnail but here I want this to be on top to create a narrow profile. So I tie this in and I cut it off. And maybe the you guys that know your patterns say there's nothing white in the sun ray, the original sun ray. There is a little bit of squirrel underneath, but <clears throat> actually the one that fished best in Lerdal was the one with a bit of white underneath. <clears throat> and here I want to show you how you can uh, use uh, parts of material in flies that you normally don't use. <clears throat> and those of you who have been watching me know that I, when it comes to peacock, I normally use the peacock that is uh, from the eye of the feather and here I have parts that's been um, cut away and I'm gonna take a few of those because I want this to be a little bulkier than the normal uh, peacock I put on top. These are a little too stiff. I take three to five of those Look at the length of these fibers so they're not exactly equal length and I put them in about the same length as the white. And uh, this is uh, one thing that actually the original Sunray had these, these peacocks and the thing with peacock is that they is that they have a natural fluorescence to them so they give a really good shine to the fly okay look at that looking good and these will disappear now after i take a bit of uh, straight black hair and here you can decide how bulky you want this to be and even if I'll take a, a piece that is a bit curly, I would say I prefer that. This is going to be a slim fly. Looking at the tapering and put this in. Does it look good? I think it looks good. And I hold it down and I tie it in and I can be fairly careless when it comes to the amount of thread I use. Make sure the black covers the white. Feel it. Look at the profile. So I have the little thin tip there. And then I raise this up and cut it off. It's about as simple as you can make a wing actually. But uh, here, the profile is the most important part. Okay, I'm going to add um, two jungle cocks. And I will, um, I'll show you this every time. Do it with the legal way, with the site certificate. Start with the feather on my side and I form it on my thumbnail. And uh, I tie it in fairly long. And again, the original fly had no jungle cocks. But um, I like to pimp it with the jungle cocks. Putting this in. The good thing is when it comes to proportions is that I look always do my side first and then I can just make sure that this is put in the same length and I know it will be 
the proportion I wanted to have. Pull it out and cut off and I try to cut between every material I tie in. So this is, it's similar to a jungle caulked uh, sunray shadow, but you know, I prefer to have my fly with a profile that is fatter in the front. This is really slim here, so I'm gonna add some materials now to build this a little bit to create, even if this is quite long fly, it will, it's a slim profile, but it will, I need to have some volume and I'm gonna add some motion to, to it here. First, I take a little bit of glue and uh, I always use support, put a little glue onto the part where I tied in the hair. And then, if I think there's too much hair there, I can take some, uh, I've got some, some feathers here. I can just take a piece that I'm not gonna use. Here we go. I take something and I just use it as, a, clean it with the extra glue that's on top so it's not gonna mix too much. Okay, now I'm going to put on some dubbing and I'm going to do Glitz, which is our long fibered synthetic dubbing. Very easy to dub. And I build up and the same way I do with all Summerize. I put some dubbing in front of the wing. And when I do a fly on a regular tube, I also have some dubbing on the body, but here the dubbing is all in front of the wing. And I put this on uh, and it needs to be quite brutal and to look not just a little, a lot overdressed. A little bit more. And here I'll take my thread and move down to the onto the uh, to the plastic tubing. Can pick up a little bit here, and I tie it down, move the thread down, and press this back. Does it look good? looks pretty awful but I think it will be good okay then I take our brush and I hold the wing and I brush this back and uh, what I do is that I create a bit of flash but I also create uh, something that's really translucent pull it back brush it out and I say our brush is the meanest one on the market that just grabs those fibers. Here we go. Now I have a little bit, I can cut some if I think it's too long like that. Now we have a little bit of, of body onto the, like the head. And now I will uh, put on a, little, a couple of hackles just to give this fly also some motion. Even though this long wing fly needs to be fished really fast, uh, it's good to have a fly that actually look a bit alive. Um, I can do this with two different materials, actually. Uh, I can do it with our pheasant drum feathers. Um, and I will get a fly that's not that bulky. It will move quite a quite good but it will not move as good I think as if I do it with um, let's see with ostrich so let's do a little bit of ostrich and what I do is that I look at the feather and I take away the part that I'm not going to use just making it easy for me to tie it in look at the sides I have one really good side and one bad side 
and um, I actually picked this feather because when I'm gonna have two different colors of, of ostrich I try to take a feather that is broken one side and I only tie in this this uh, this half feather meaning that I get I can do two turns without getting too many strands and I hold it back like this use my hand as a support and I cut it off and I tie it in and I'm now down on the extra small and then I do two turns of this and I don't have to double because the feather is stripped to one side. Does it look good? I think it look good. To tie this in now, either I can do this. I think that's simple. I just pull out the fibers I don't need and I just pull them away from the, from the feather and then I tie it in. Or I can just tie it in without doing that two of course. A few turns, cut it off, look at this and you can see how this will add motion to the fly. Uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of white. I actually taken a big feather here and uh, some kind, sometimes you find a feather where you can use this I can use for maybe eight or ten flies, but I'm gonna just tie, take this top part, and uh, I can do the same here. I can just cut it off, look at it, which side this is good side both. It's better for me to have a feather that I cut away the other side, so I have one feather going one way and the other feather going the other way. That way I get a lot stronger fly. So I do this, pull up a little bit here. I can actually use my, my plier on this. Cut it off, create the little triangle again and uh, Tie it in, and again, I don't have to be so careful with the thread. Taking my plier, here we go, it's a lot of dubbing here. And I take this, and the good thing with our plier is that it's uh, heavy. Here we go, I got a little bit too much. Dubbing involved here, I do it again. You, the good thing with the, with the heavy plier is that when I uh, tie this in close to the block, I can let go of this because it's heavy enough to just hold the uh, feather in place. Two turns, let it go, take this and just tie it in. One and two turns and then I can take the plier away and secure it. And cut away. Here we go. And what I get here is I get the white and the black fibers to mix and uh, create very good contrast. And even against the white or the black, against the light sky or uh, maybe uh, a wave or a stone or whatever, where you, you get a very good contrast with the black and white. And I think that adds to making this fly such a, a good fishing fly. Okay, and uh, uh, then I'm gonna put on, I had a few here, a little soft tackle. Just to get a little extra volume and some extra motion and uh, it's a uh, small feather and I do the same 
uh, always even these super soft feathers I tie them in in the tip and here I would like to have uh, two turns and I showed you before always when cutting small things like this I put my scissors on the finger and they use support before I cut it so I know I cut what I exactly where I want it and not slip away pull it back here we go if I have one or two uh, of the ostrich I can just pull them back then I take this and uh, I can do this by hand and when I work a feather with two sides I always double meaning I take three fingers and I hold back the strands, strands I'm going to tie in doing that I get all fibers coming one side of the feather this way I just tie this in create the extra amount of volume right in the very front of the fly tie this in and um, well you can see it's not that it looks not that like a regular sunray shadow but I'm actually adding so much motion to this that the original fly doesn't have and when you fish this on a downstream belly which I think is best really fast fast and white water this doesn't really matter but when the fly uh, uh, slows down and you it starts to even dangle this will make a hell of a big difference on how this fly appears okay almost done uh, I do uh, a little turbo, micro turbo, just uh, the big thing here with this is to protect the thread. Put a little glue and I put the glue away from the material and then I use, I hold this back and I use the thread to pick up some glue like that. Give it a few seconds, pull down the, the turbo, take the thread away and then I take the fly out of the vise, pull it down, take it out of the vise and uh, hold it back, cut this a uh, couple of mil, two to three. And I told you before, the smart guy was Newton that found out that things want to go this way. So if I melt it like this, there's not going to be a hole. But if I keep this like this and I melt it, I will keep a nice little hole for my leader. And you can, of course, use a fluorescent extra small here to add a little bit of color to it but I've been using the clear one here okay so it looks quite bulky but I tell you when you look at the ostrich when ostrich will uh, trim down get wet this will be quite slim with a lot of motion to it okay so like all looking at this wing is it good yeah it's good it's a little looked a little bulky but i think it's okay and when you fish a ttt i always fish the ttt with a loose body and the good thing with having the loose body is i'm gonna do this now on the clear tubing and the good thing here is that what you do is you slide up the TTT on your leader and you slide up the loose body and then you tie on your knot, uh, tie on your hook and then you can 
fix the hook in this part and this will just slide down in front of this and a summary like this so we're summary samurai I will fish this on the clear tubing without anything if I want to add a little bit I can just take this put it on and I can dress it up that was a lot with a little bit of mirage if I'll dress this with a little mirage I will add some uh, uh, some glitter to this fly and um, I don't need to put to tie that for you you uh, know how to do that you just fix it and and put that on and slide this down and uh, you will have uh, the see it's so tricky to put this on the other way and you will have the sunray samurai little odd fly but also a super nice fishing fly that you can use in clear waters in anything in fast and slow and you have because of this also added some extra motion to the fly so that was it and uh, I hope you enjoyed it it's a simple fly but it's a uh, few small techniques here that will add to the original pattern I think I don't know what Mr. Brooks would have said about my version on his fly but um, he was an innovative guy that liked to move things forward uh, and actually I would think that for certain occasions he would have liked to fish even my version of his special fly okay 45 uh, and uh, next month we're gonna do like I always tell you we're gonna do something is totally different and uh, uh, it's gonna be a very complex fly it's gonna be one of the best known or the best known salmon fly of all times I'm not gonna tell you what but I guess you can guess so if you want to try to tie this uh, or you want to try to fish it as before we have our our packs with the flies six flies three sizes or we have the pattern packs where you can tie at least 10 of those with our um, I, I would say super good hair together with our synthetics and our cones and stuff and uh, well so thank you for watching and um, stay strong and tie on and see you in a month time